Hello and welcome to game number two of this third place decider for Rising Stars versus MUFC. AMD Premier League winner takes home $500, but there is so much more at stake because just, uh, you know, you want to have that third place to your name so that you can brag about it. Most importantly for Rising Stars so that you can show the world that you are indeed deserving that TI3 invite. Rising Stars gotta go to the qualifiers. MUFC, they need to win to hold off their honor. They got the invite to TI3, like, guaranteed. Well, they have to prove that it was the right choice for Valve to make because... Oh, well, you know, you want to be able to say that to the world at least. We're gonna be seeing them in the game too. Rising Stars, one game up in this series at the moment. So, MUFC's job is to force out a game number three. And Rising Stars will, of course, want to make it a 2-0. And I won't be casting this one by myself. As promised, I will be joined once again by Basekip. Welcome back. Yeah, glad to be back. I did manage to catch the last game that obviously I got I got in a little bit late to, to make it into the lobby. So excited to be here again. More Dota action for AMD Dota 2 Premier League. And yeah, um, I'm excited about this one. And I'm really excited about the grand final later on uh, as well, obviously. That's going to be... I, I'm, like, I'm, I hope I'm not getting my hopes up too high because apparently that's been happening a lot lately. <laughs> lately. <laughs> but it should be such real good matches and... Between two TI3 invitees, I mean, there is a lot of hype going on about the qualifiers, of course, and that, that makes sense. But uh, I actually saw today on my Twitter feed that, I've got, let's see, I'm going to look it up right now, actually, because it was funny. Like someone mm -hmm. saying, it's almost like it's not the best teams competing in the qualifiers. <laughs> <laughs> but that's of course true because the best teams got invited. So you know, yeah, there's a lot naturally. of help, uh, a lot of hype about the qualifiers. But what about the best teams, right? We still want to see those too, and this is today the chance to see those. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I'm gonna. I mean, I've I still don't know what the the axe pick was about last game. I mean, I was listening to you chat about it, but we saw them do it yesterday. We saw yeah. it work. It's a similar effect today. I was really hoping for some solo mid axe against TA because that's that's the saddest Templar assassin that you're ever gonna see. But yeah, it didn't quite, I didn't quite end up happening that way. So MUFC actually prioritizing the Shadow Demon ban. So not only have they been picking it very highly, they've been picking it above the next, uh, and Ten, seven, yeah, prioritizing seven. it in their bans as well. So it, look, it looks like Shadow Demon's moving up in the world a bit, Five, uh, and seven, I think Nyx is settling out. Though that could just be you know the. The meta for this competition, you know, yeah. as compared to yeah, we the saw greater actually, Dota scene. Uh, in, in, in Western Dota, we saw him getting ignored a couple of times last Monday. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's very specific in terms of teams. But what do you think about, like, okay, you know what? They've been out of Shadow Demon. Great. That's uh, resulting in the Magnus still being in. But MUFC actually pick up the Rubik rather than the Magnus. Yeah, I think that's, that's actually pretty interesting. Um... From them, Rising Stars. We saw a lot of. We saw some Wisp yesterday, so we haven't seen that. We haven't seen a, a repeat of that just yet. Maybe that'll be the the ace in the hole for the the third game. But yeah, MUFC really prioritizing these supports over overtaking the mag. I like their chances of getting their hands on the RP, obviously, just because of the long cast times. But um, I'm not sure if I would necessarily take Rubik so early in the draft. And Rising Stars, they worked in game one. It, they're looking for a repeat this time around. They're going to pick themselves up the anti mage. Yeah, I, I suddenly remembered yesterday's uh, Magnus by Mofi, actually, where I think the lack of RPs was noticeable, so maybe they're not too afraid of Rising Stars or Magnus, who knows. <clears throat> but uh, it is going to be an anti-mage again, so that is going to be their, uh, their mm. carry. Let's see if MUFC is going to give him an easy time on the lane again, because that anti-mage really made the game a lot faster in the end. Yeah. If you don't shut him down, this is what will happen. So you have to do <laughs> yeah. something well, I, against it. And if, if you give him a good start as well, I yeah. think. Well, AM no deaths beyond godlike streak in 20 minutes or something like that. So that was that was an anti mage in his prime. MUFC looking to you know not have a repeat of that. Uh, Rising stars, interestingly, you know, go, they are very mobile, but they are triple melee right out of the right out of the gate. So MUFC getting their you know getting at some good support bands and. I'd actually, you know, while Jarek, uh, I mean, while uh, Jakiro, sorry, has actually fallen out of the metagame a little bit, he's so nice to have against, you know, against just multiple melee. Uh, and we could even see an Earthshaker here as well, though, again, Rising Stars, they are kind of mobile, so it's not necessarily an issue of, of getting over the Fissure, it's just more that they are going to be clustered up a little bit uh, in these fights. 
Yeah, I think actually um, the Jakira wouldn't be too bad on Rising Stars aside either. I mean, it works well together with the RP and the Magnus, works well together with the Clockwork. And just overall, is a very safe hero to have as your support, as we saw that previous game as well. I mean, that Ice Pass just works the same as if a mini, mini Fisher, I think I can call it. Just a bit of a security for Antimage to buy him some time to get away. As, by the way, Rising Stars yesterday were the team that, in both games that they played, picked up the Wisp. Completely yeah. ignored today. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen it. Maybe I I, th I think again maybe that's their secret, you know that's Five their secret weapon. Remaining. So if this goes to game three, maybe uh, we'll see it. We did see them get punished in some Reserve kind of humiliating time. ways with the wisp yesterday. I think you'll remember that very last relocate TP yeah. into the middle of the smoked heroes, and that was the that was the okay we're done. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe rising stars are are just gonna stay away from the wisp maybe for a day or two, uh, and then we'll see them you know playing it some more. But MUFC looking very aggressive so far, not super tanky I have to say uh, the lineup right now. So hopefully that Nature's Prophet's gonna be going for a reasonably early mech. Um, but I like it, tons of ganking power and rising stars add one more melee. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So. When you're up against a lineup that has only ranged. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not entirely sure if that's the right call. I mean, control-wise, if you're running towards your opponent, Ruby can just pick you up, and there's going to be a lightning strike array as well, or light strike array rather. There's going to be a sprout to hold you in place. There's going to be a slow from the Queen of Pain. And basically, yeah. only anti can get around then. Get Magnus maybe with the score, but it's going to be there tough. And there man. comes a Sven, and that is going to be something that MUFC have played a lot of. And this time, it doesn't look like it's going to be a support Sven, though, so... A Rubik, Lina, Sven combination with Queen of Pain mid, Nature's Prophet on the offlane. It is going to be fairly aggressive and they, I think they might actually try to go for an aggressive trial and to shut down the anti -mage this time for real. Yeah, definitely could be. I, I think talking about the Sven pickup as far as the overall context of the game is concerned, he's kind of weird because there, are, there is a Magnus, there is a Clockwork on the other side. So those are two things that are going to be able to you know, give him trouble while he's BKB'd and so that's going to make his damage output remaining. not so great. On the flip side of that coin, Rising Stars are predominantly melee, so they are going to be a little bit grouped up in fights, so that's going to help out the cleave. So there, there are two sides to that coin. Uh, I'm interested to see that it's not the Gyrocopter, but I think the point is 100% valid, that they're looking to kill the Anti-Mage early, and that additional lockdown that they have from the Sven is going to make that relatively straightforward. So I think I would have, you know, just looking at what would happen in the mid-game and the late-game team fights, I would have preferred to see a Gyrocopter, but with the goal in mind of murdering the Anti-Mage as many times as you possibly can, I do definitely like this event pickup here. And there's the first range pickup. It is the Enchantress. And... Well... I, I said in the previous game, because of course previous game we saw the Enchantress as well, and, and the thing about her is that she has got this advantage over the Chen for being able to get more than one creep earlier on, so able to be aggressive, more aggressive earlier on. But do you really want to be more aggressive early on if you're only getting melee heroes and you've got yourself an anti that just wants to be safe and farm? Or are they actually planning on building this enchantress to be a bit more of a semi-carry kind of enchantress? Which could be the case, of course. But I'm not too sure yeah. if I agree with that. I, I feel like so much of enchantress's time is going to be occupied in the early game just hovering around top lane, trying to, to scare the supports away from harassing anti-mage. Because... What can Sand King do against this lane? Absolutely nothing. He's going to be harassed by the two range supports. It means that Han Trash player can sit right on top of the creep wave. And if Anti Mage gets too close, what can Sand King do? Use his rank one or two bar strike to try and hit the Rubik or the Lina? I mean, it's just not really going to happen. So Rising Star is very defensive. I think the Enchantress is going to have a pretty tough time. If she gets some good creeps early, if they can connect those ganks, which are you know perhaps a little bit unexpected, then they can maybe afford to turn things around. They could actually go a kind of early game build on the anti-mage uh, as well. So we'll see what direction they take this. But I think MUFC, I like, uh, I like the lineup a lot right now. And I, I like their chances. And MUFC is looking for some blood. Gonna be fighting super first. There goes a stun super. You are super dead. There we go. First blood goes the way of Link's Lina. Gonna be Whoa. Well, that yeah. was fast. That was really. I'm not even sure if the light striker was actually needed. That was just. I mean, she already specced and chance, so she couldn't do anything with a heal. The begins. Yeah. I so I, I think that's. Go. I think that's a taste of what's to come, for MUFC, on top. I mean, that is not. That's a very repeatable formula between the you know the Sven stun, the light striker. We didn't even see Winter cast anything. He was, he was pretty comfortable that that kill was going to happen. So. Yeah. 
He's going to rotate down, you know, place a couple of wards, get set up. Um, and I guess we should very quickly run over who's playing what before we see anything too exciting going on. Yeah, we have actually a swap of roles. Hunt Trash player is not going to be the Queen of Pain this game. Is going to be playing the Sven, however. We are already saw, of course, we already saw Lina being played by Ling. And on the middle lane we have then got FCFC playing the Queen of Pain. Winter is uh, roaming around a bit, placing wards, I thought, but is now on his way back towards the top lane. Gonna be playing that Rubik. And on the bottom lane, it is a solo. Too fucking good on his Nature's Prophet. And he should be okay up against the Clockwork, at least for now. And again, I mean, one important thing to note is that it is an aggressive trial lane, but it can be a quadra lane any time of the day when the yeah, Nature's Prophet is Exactly. I mean, it, it's like two and a half heroes for Rising Stars with the Enchantress being in and out. And it's, you know, three and a half for MUFC at four if they want it. So that's. That's really good. I guess really quickly, Rising Stars, we've got Mofi, he's going to be on the Clockwork on bot. Mid lane's going to be Air, no big surprises, he's on the Magnus. We've got Super, as he said, uh, playing the Enchantress. XDD going to be on the Sand King. And that leaves Sao Tuji to play the Anti Mage. Yeah, and the Anti Mage is going to get stunned. Light Strike Raid. Is there enough damage this time? Telekinesis just to top it all off, but he can blink away, and he will do just that. That is just a result of not having Lina level 2 just yet. If she was level 2, the Dragon Slave would have been there, and the Dragon Slave would have been able to kill off the anti mage. And uh, this, uh, it was actually a level 1 anti mage. I was kind of wondering, does he actually have his point in spell shield? Which, in this setup, you might be expecting fairly early on, really, just to mitigate yeah. some of the damage that you get. I mean, it's such a big jump from 0 resistance to 26%. So, um,. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that, but he, he just survi uh, survived it without really any extra effort. And he actually goes for mana break first. Wow. That's oh, surprisingly okay. aggressive. Oh, well. He wasn't able to sandstorm that one. And I don't think that uh, Ling was uh, ready for that either. He uh, wasn't in time with the Light Strike Array and XCD is going to be just fine. This will leave Hauntrash player without any mana. Yeah. So either Clarity is left in the lane. There's still a couple, so I think they're going to be... They're going to be fine. Two minute earn is going to be picked up by FCFC, so he's having a pretty good time uh, on mid. Definitely a better time than we saw on that that DK against the Skyrath Mage yesterday. That wasn't that was not his greatest showing, but you know, showing why he is on this team. He's doing a good job against the Mag, though. Magnus, the nature of the matchup, as always, he's going to bottle throw. He's going to get farm. He's going to spam his way up. So that's going to be fine for him. Uh, and the bot matchup for the Clockwork. Mofi actually doing a pretty good job. It's really difficult to kill off the the Nature's Prophet. Uh, in this pairing, but yeah, we'll see. He might be able to at level 6 or something along those lines. So he's got a very defensive build, starting to get more and more points uh, up in the Rocket Flare. So even if he does manage to jump on top of the, the Profit, I think the rank 1 battery assault probably not going to be enough to kill him. Well, in fact, the first off, it's the same thing. I mean, it's yeah, not going to exactly. be easy to kill off a clock either, so both are pretty safe, I would say, in their lane. Until someone overextends, in which case it can be either good or bad for either. And it really is... Uh, micro decisions then that will make or break the kill or not kill as we have actually got XCD joining super in the jungle a bit realizing that an anti mage might be able to blink away in time from stuns yeah I, I have to say that anti mage has a surprising amount of farm given that he's up against a double a double 600 range support lane with enough chains done to you know really kill him off any time so uh, MFC are now driving him out but he's yeah he has a surprising amount of a surprising amount of levels, surprising amount of last hits, given this laning configuration. So, yeah. MUFC may be playing it a little bit defensive. We did see them, you know, trying to interrupt the pull and whatnot, so that's the source of some of those last hits for AM. Oh, yeah, but they do need to be doing this, this aggressive play and just oh. keeping the AM back. That's the kind of thing that they need to go on, like the telekinesis, then the stuns. But they, they can't, they, at some point, I mean, they're just giving up for, by the looks of it. They're giving anti mate solo experience, like you said, he's still getting last hits. They were actually not really helping Ling when he got harassed. They might be... Oh, and John was getting blocked by her own creep. Nature's Descendants are still gonna be there though. And the Burrow Strike up on two. Nature's Prophet still TPing in on Trash Player. Running for his life will be killed off soon though. And will be taken by Super. Light Strike Array again up on Super. His Nature's Descendants are on cooldown. He will get picked off. It is two for one though. With Hunt Trash Player going down as well. Hello, FZ. Wanted to be here as well. XED gotta be able to Burrow Strike himself away. And also Antimate able to jump away. That is a 2 for one trade, not worth it for MUFC, because they actually had five heroes at some point on that top lane. Yeah, they brought absolutely everybody there. 
Um, but Anti-Mage gets away scot-free, level 5, you know, one kill, still reasonable CS as far as this point in the game is concerned, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that this tri-lane hasn't locked him out that much. And again, I think you're right, we saw a lift earlier on, you know, the level 1 gank, everybody was level 1, it was a level 1 stun, it was a level 1 lift, it was a level 1 light strike array. And now they've got level 3, they've got a rank 2 stun, they've got 2 points in Fade Bolt, they've got 2 points in Dragon Slave as well. I think they're underestimating a little bit. You know how much damage they actually have, and that's letting Anti Mage just continue to soak experience and farm. Uh, and they're actually going to make life a little bit easier for him on top if they take this tier one. Yep. Gonna be buying, uh, well, gonna be giving him basically a lane to farm in. More space to farm in as Winter gets harassed a bit by a creep. But um, yeah, Anti Mage is doing pretty well. He indeed picked up that one, level one in spell shield. He went for stats just for the extra survivability. And he is. Pretty happy where he is, I think. And MUFC are kind of at a, at a loss, and their decisions are just not there. Decisions that they need to have to be able to get this going. Maybe they can still do something here. Too fucking good. Actually, got himself some face boots. It's gonna be uh, not slowed by super. But they they have four heroes here on the top lane, and don't do anything with it apart from taking the tower, which is nice. Okay, you get some extra solid gold, but like you said, you give more space that animates the farm. And he's not gonna be sad about that at all. Yeah, T TFG started a TP, really gave away that he was coming in for that, that gank, and then the second TP, I mean, just didn't connect. So he spent a long time away from bot, it really shows. Mofi's already level 6, he's almost got some arcanes if that's going to be the first pickup. Uh, and MUFC, I just think, not very efficient with their time uh, on the top lane. Yeah, we're going to be seeing both Super and XTD smoking up, they actually rotate the top, realizing that their anti is in trouble, and this time... And we have to see, we'll be able to pick it up. The telekinesis was there, was there to start things off with. And everything else to follow up. But they are going to be trying to take something in return. Mopi with the flare, picking up the Rubik. Burrow's like helping out. Link going to do what he can before he dies, but he will die. He can't get away. Shockwave will be doing the job. Actually, the Burrow's like us first, so kill steal right there. And we're going to be seeing Huntridge player running for his life. He is the only one that should probably be getting away, unless Air can do something there. But nope, he cannot TP in coming from Rubik again as well. Mm. But they did get the anti mage. Uh, yeah, exactly. Interestingly, Mofi didn't have both cogs and hookshot mana there, so that's that's part of the reason why he didn't continue to chase down Hontrash player for I guess anybody who might have been curious about yeah, why that why that third kill didn't happen. But rising stars. I was expecting this tri lane to get so much more done, but we you know we find them at eight minutes and they're actually up one point five K experience. They're down, you know, effectively a tower worth of gold, which is, you know, no big surprises, but yeah, I'm surprised that they came out of the early game as well as they did. Yeah, in the meantime, Antimage has rotated bottom, is harassing too fucking good away. The tower still went down though, and it's not in the night. So towers are, uh, two towers now in favor of MUFC, and I guess since their trial and kind of didn't work out the way they intended to, they need to get this, this push going, the split push is gonna be their strength, and... It is definitely not going to be easy, but it is going to be something that they can do if that Nature's Prophet keeps being Nature's Prophet and being annoying. Like exactly. Uh, we know that they doing exactly be. what he does. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Prophet gonna profit. And exactly. That's profit the hero, and then profit as in just continue to gain gold nonstop. So, yeah. Uh, but Rising Stars, they send Anti-Mage down towards the spot. The supports are wandering around a little bit to try and find him. Uh, Winter almost has some boots up, but... Again, just not a great time for the supports for MUFC. I think not as well as they would have expected either from uh, from how the draft looked. So Rising Stars actually going to group up a little bit. Super, again, by virtue of that top lane going as well as it did for them, he didn't actually have to be too active, so he's almost going to have his level 6, working his way towards a pretty quick mech, and I think Rising Stars is going to be really happy with their position moving into this mid-game. Yeah, and they're actually laying, laying down some pressure in the mid-lane. They do, of course, have that RP waiting around. Uh, no no epicenter just yet, XCD only level 4. That's the result of being on a try lane, of course. Is the lowest level in the game together with the Rubik, who is also still level 4, also a result of the aggressive trailing. And um, Rising Stars, they're actually rotating bottom with the whole army. There's gonna be five people of Rising Stars on the bottom lane, all ready to take down the enemy. MUFC already scouts them out, though. Light Strike Array. Whoa! Sonic Wave hits up on two RP, only up on one, but FC will be going down because he gets everything on top of him. It is gonna be Magnus that still goes down. Too fucking good. Running from the Centaurs, we'll be able to pick up. 
At least one as Sand King still goes down to the Laguna Blade from Link. Shadow Strike gonna be missed up on the anti mage. He blinks himself out. That was a fight for MUFC that just was going really well. Anti mage still on the run, might still be in some trouble here. He is running for his life. He has got a blink, he has got a TP, and he is gonna use both. But oh my god, that blow up on that enchantress. <laughs> I mean enchantress with 606 HP, that's not yeah, doesn't doesn't really hold up too well against the burst damage. So. And you can see that's going to be a straight mech rush as well. No <coughs> strength treads, no urn. Um, she's going to stay squishy for you know, for quite a while here. So that's going to be tough. We're probably going to see a repeat performance of that that sonic wave explosion um, <laughs> later on. But nice for MUFC Rising Stars. I think a little bit too aggressive. I mean, they paraded everybody past two wards. They gave MUFC all the time in the world to plan exactly what they were going for there, so... Yeah, and they walked in completely a little blind bit sloppy. themselves. Like, they walked past yeah. two wards, that's, that's okay if you know where the opponent is. As we're gonna see uh, Burl Strike up on Nature's Prophet, he is gonna be running for his life. Manavoid not doing as much, Stick Charge is helping out, and he is just running. Three seconds before another Burl Strike. TPs, where art thou? No TPs. Yeah, no, no help. <laughs> for no help. Because they're preparing the something mid, they have smoked up. Yeah. And they're looking for something. Telekinesis, the light strike array at the ready. Mophi is gonna be the target. Mophi is gonna be also very safe by the looks of it. Or not. I'm gonna come in from the side. Look in. Now FC blinking himself away, and here comes Winter. He shows himself. Telekinesis is still gonna be there. Also, light strike array hits. Laguna Blade as well, but Mophi, super duper tanky, is gonna be able to stay alive for now. Has got that. Shadow Strike ticking on him, but it's only level 1, so he won't die from that as the tower is actually possible to get the knight and air just picks himself up that solo kill up on FC. Life Strike Ray is still gonna hit, but there's not enough damage, or is there? Stormhammer gonna hit, the right clicks continue. Burl Strike on the side picks up Winter, almost picks up Winter as we see Magnus going down. Winter, oh, long range impetus. <laughs> it's gonna be super getting himself a kill. And it's gonna be Ling that will probably go down as well. Burrow strikes, Light Strike Ray still hits, and the stun. That actually goes very well. Two seconds on. Mana Void still gonna be there to pick up the last hit, I guess. And nobody else going down on side of Rising Stars. That was MUFC. I don't know, slightly overconfident? Uh, I, I think it goes okay in the end. I mean, FZ was uh, not expecting the, the skewer and just well, got killed off. But uh, Prophet did actually manage to last at the tower by TPing in. So I guess that was a bit of a trade off. It was the kill for not getting the deny, but I think a kill that, you know, you're gonna be happier with than just getting the tower denied. Uh, and at the end of the day, yeah, Rising Stars come out a little bit on top after that one. So, yeah, I think MUFC, perhaps, just that, that little bit over aggressive when you don't have that Queen of Pain. Yeah, and of course, I mean, even though Rising Stars comes out ahead, there is now no tier one tower left standing for Rising Stars, so maybe their farm area is going to be a bit uh, deducted here and I guess I mean uh, we, we st already said that MUFC they should try to split push so towers are going to be a bit worth more than just skills for MUFC so just removing all those other towers really Don't means a lot player. in terms of space and in terms of just getting ahead in the, this game and more importantly they hold on to all their own well to all their own towers so that is going to be all gold that is not given to rising stars just yet yeah. And, and the biggest deal for MEFC is, you know, taking this 4k gold advantage and actually, you know, turning it into something, turn it into a couple of kills, uh, something along those lines, because eventually, you know, rising stars, they're going to come knocking, you can't defend these tier ones forever. Uh, so it's probably gold that they're going to, you know, they're going to get their hands on before this game is, is really clinched out. Um, but no, MEFC, nice aggressive warding, so looking to keep the pressure on. Right now. Yeah, they're gonna be finding air soon. Here comes Telekinesis. I don't know if they can take it though, but they're gonna try. Light Strike Array, they are gonna be able to do that. Shockwave stolen from Winter to finish it off. Nicely done. Good pickup also, because he had his RP ready, and we know that he wants to use that when he has it. Yeah, exactly. FZ came in, look, I think he was looking for a bit of revenge. Double damage pop comes down to the blink, and Magnus is, is already gone. So. Don't worry, supports. Yeah. I got your back. Yeah. Denied that opportunity, yeah. uh, but the dual roam from MUFC is just looking, it's looking great between these two supports. They're getting, they're getting a ton done, they're getting, I mean, look at Lina's score. Ling is 5 for 2 for, uh, 5 for 2 for 3, so almost 100% attendance uh, as far as kills are concerned. And Rising Star is actually going to take the decision to, you know, try and go for a bit of a, well, a trade. Top 4 bot. It's going to be a tier 1 for a tier 2. 
Mm. Huntress player, uh, just just uh, at least slowing them down. Tower actually doesn't go down. Oh, Mophie's hook gets blocked by air. That's not really nice. The TPs are actually going on. They are going to be defending this burrow strike away from XDD, and I don't think they're going to be able to catch anybody anymore unless XDD is going to get caught out there. But that's not going to be the case. No, or is it? Not quite. Oh, TFG jumping over it. Oh, it's yeah, it's sent. Same thing. Yes, still seven six charge. Never mind. Ha! Vision and Nature's Prophet Ultimate. That's all yeah, that just, it needs. Just keeping the vision going. Yeah. yeah. So nicely done by them. Nice little pick off. It is only the Sand King, but um, they are you know getting something done with this this gold advantage. I'm interested to see that they didn't end up trading that tier one for the tier two. So I just not wanting to give you know not wanting to give Anti Mage an opportunity at all. And this tier one top is actually pretty valuable because it's a launching point. Uh, for ganks on the anti mage once he's you know farming up in the jungle, so I guess MUFC, you know, you have to place a little bit more value on this tower than you normally would. I mean, normally for the radiant, this tier one top is going to be a throwaway, but uh, I think it will perhaps turn out to be important uh, in dealing with the AM. Yeah, and of course it, it just shows that they want they don't want to give Rising Stars any form of just extra gold to them. They want to try to try to shut them down. It's not really easy, of course. I mean. It's just not when you're up against an anti mage that is almost ready to flash farm. Even though he didn't pick up treads, he picked up himself some tranquil boots. So flash farm still a bit away, but you just don't want to be giving him anything extra. So I guess that's okay. In the meantime, Huntress player building towards the BKB. Got himself the drums ready already. We see Nature's Prophet. We saw him already with the Hand of Midas. He now also picked up, well, <clears throat> almost picked up himself an Orchid. And I think that FC might be in some trouble by the looks of uh, the amount of people gathering on the top lane for Rising Stars. They really want that tower. Yeah, this is big. This no fortification. I think MUFC this time around probably gonna have to, probably gonna have to give this one away. Um, but Rising Stars, the problem's gonna be. I think Nature's Prophet's gonna get a ton of mileage out of this Orchid. I mean, obviously against the Magnus, obviously against the Enchantress and the Sand King. But even on the Anti Mage for a while, he has now finished up his Battle Fury. But uh, the Manta's still going to be a little bit away, so they're probably going to be able to pick up maybe one or two kills uh, using that Orchid, because it's, it's you know, it's almost finished, only 300 gold for him. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised that they went for, <clears throat> wow, they went with five people towards the top lane to take down a tier 1 tower that was like very low on HP to begin with. I could have probably been taken down by anti mage himself with the, without that backdoor protection for tier 1 towers, and they actually backed off afterwards, even though they had everything up. Mm. Ooh, smoke. Yeah, big big smoke gank for the <coughs> MUFC. Let's see who they're gonna be able to find first. Two people that can dodge stun, so the telekinesis will be important. Flare is gonna scout at least Winter out, now Hunter Flare yeah, as, as well, so they back off. Can't find anything. And the five man roam continues, they're just protecting that anti mage. Who now has his battle fury yeah. ready. Yeah, very defensive on the AM. They're actually gonna go for a smoke as well, so it looks like the game plan is to just walk behind. Yeah, the AM and and hope that MUFC come down to try and stop him. So uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case. Meanwhile, FZ is going to be pushing in on top, uh, and Prophet, you know, probably ready to give an assist there if needed. Yeah, and it's going to be Ling that's already getting caught out here. Little girl shouldn't be alone in the woods. Lesson learned. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty dark way of putting it, but. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. Lena is one of those people that, you know, shouldn't be alone. Queen of Pain, I think, would manage yeah. herself just fine. But Lena and Crystal Maiden, no. Yeah, Cop, Cop's not a little girl. So. Exactly. Well, yeah, we have a haste room for a pickup for someone, actually. Right, uh, TFG's, TFG's still just camping out the side here. I think he could be applying pressure some, somewhere else. I don't know if they're necessarily <laughs> going to take this fight. Um, but still extreme patience from him right now. Would have been funny if he walked out by the time that uh, Aero was around there buying something at the side shop. He actually got himself a gem of true side now with his blink dagger. Yep. <clears throat> so looking good. And yeah, that's going to be... As well. That's going to be nice, especially Ooh, since MUFC have been... Ooh. Oh, Winter is going to be okay. The Burrow Strike gets up on uh, FC. They really didn't like him, like RP, that, 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 Epicenter, yeah. everything. <laughs> they, they don't want FC to live. And I think he suspects this because he's just straight rushing the BKB. So, yeah, this is. I think this is going to be a theme. Um, but at a certain point, focusing down the Queen of Paint is going to put you on the receiving end of the Sven uh, and the receiving end of the Nature's Prophet. So that's not going to be so much fun. Yeah, and too late for the stun from the anti-mage and he is dead. Oh, so 
The league yep. too late. Uh, Gonna be uh, Light Striker Raid, Laguna Bladed, everything in between. And, yeah. and Orchided as well, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be big. At least Antimage was able to get himself away from there. Mofi gonna get stunned up after being sprouted. There is enough damage to take him down if Huntress player reaches him, which he doesn't because the hookshot is there. Mofi, 60 HP, who cares? He's alive. Yeah. Uh, but AM dead for 20 seconds. They know that the hookshot's on cooldown for a while. And the RP still on cooldown. And the RP, and the RP, and everything that you can think yeah. of, yeah. So, I mean, they, they get quite a bit out of that, you know, everything being thrown on top of FCFC strat. So he's gonna go and get some recovery farm uh, on bot. He's almost got that BKB, so that, that hate isn't going to be quite so effective. Yeah, and they're actually gonna leave the tier 2 stat. Never mind. Gonna get the knight. I felt like they could have gone for it, still, but... Mm. Oh well. MUFC, gonna continue roaming, gonna continue getting that spend farmed up. Of course, at some point you wanna have the possibility to one-shot your entire opponent team. That would be amazing, of course, if they can get that going. Um, yeah, not very close to that, though. Like, he has his BKB almost, but we're 21 minutes in, and I'm kind of surprised to see that he is not really doing a lot better. If you look at the net worth, though, like, he is still third of his uh, of the entire list, with second of his team, because Anti-Mage, just to... Or Anti-Mage, they just profit the one just pulling ahead as we see Mofi getting killed off. The Orchid will do the job, actually. There we go. Yeah. Like TFG doing a really good job of, of just getting a huge amount out of the low cooldown on this yeah. Orchid. I mean, as you can see, it's, it's pretty much already back up. He's got the, you know, teleportation back up, so... And anytime they see someone, you know, until AM gets that Manta style, he's as susceptible to these ganks as anyone. Yeah, and then they're making they're making the best out of it. And there's now gonna be pushing down another tier two. We're gonna be seeing if they can do that. Of course, uh, for people that joined later, wait a second. Nope, they're not gonna go in. Uh, this is the third place decider for the AMD Premier League MUFC taking on Rising Stars, and um, this is game two. So game one was taken by Rising Stars MUFC now. Looking to be in a good position to take game number two, unless Anti-Mage is still going to be given that time to get himself all fat and tanky and, you know, kill, killing machine, lean and mean, mm. etc. But, uh, but yeah, game two. Anything can still happen. I feel like this game is still in the hands of both, while previous game was just pretty one-sided. Yeah. Do you know what the prize distribution oh, looks like? Yes. I know that the total prize pool is 5k, but I haven't been able to find what the distribution is. Well, so. it's very <laughs> top-heavy. Uh, the first place gets three thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Second place one thousand five hundred, and the third place gets five hundred. Okay, so it's it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a it's a and, big and, deal. And fourth gets just nothing. Is fourth that... gets nothing. Gets nothing, and I mean maybe five hundred dollars. You'll think you know what might not be that much for a third place, but I feel like this third place is so much more than just the third place. I mean, you've got MUFC, straight TI three invite T. They need to yeah, prove there's their so much more to the world, the yeah, like... There's, there's so much more right. on the line. Exactly. Just... And Rising Stars and the Qualifier one, of course, have uh, a fan base for themselves when the Qualifiers come next week, and they're doing really well. They already beat Orange. They just won a game against MUFC, and, and they're fighting all those invitee teams and are holding their own, which is not what you can say for any qualified uh, Qualifier team. So really doing well and making a name for themselves, I think, really, yeah. Are they, they're going to be in the East Qualifiers, right? Or... Yes, Rising Stars is yeah. in the Qualifiers. And um, apparently, on, in the words of someone from IG, I don't know who, but I got told this, um, IG is uh, looking out for all teams that are RS, so Rattlesnake and Rising Stars. Uh, both upcoming teams that can just throw you off guard and just take the game. Just like that. Just, uh, just, just, yeah. just you know, ruin the strategy that you have in mind and making it not work anymore for you and, and making it work for them instead. And I still don't even know if we're seeing what is necessarily Rising Star's style in this game. I mean, I feel like looking through their, their VODs, looking through old games, they're, they're characterized so much more by a, just a little bit more aggression than what we're seeing here. I mean, we've seen farming Storm Spirit so they can have a Quap and a Storm. Uh, as a strategy against, you know, Nakes and, and Anti-Mage, and we see Wisp quite a bit as well, and we mentioned that in the draft that we just haven't 
Uh, we haven't seen that from them. So they're, they're playing a pretty stable game at the moment, though we'll see. It might come down to, you know, pulling out their A game for... Yeah, oh, <laughs> shot in. Gonna be on the creep, though. Actually, no, gonna be on FC. BKB's all around. Sonic Wave! And it's done. And there's an RP up on two BKB targets. But the Rising Stars will use this to try to get himself out of their anti -mage. Able to blink away. No kills just yet. Burrow strike in the trees. XDD gonna be sticking around there. We do see the first target to drop. It is the Clockwork. It is going to be Nature's Prophet that takes the credit for that one, and it is FC looking for a kill with a double damage rune. Is going to be actually dive in the base. Should you really do that? No. No, 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 no. And that's a lot of things thrown at that fight with only one kill going away of MEFC. Yeah. That's the only kill there. Rising Stars surprisingly get out of there without too many casualties, but the bigger deal is losing all of those long ability cooldowns. So. Yeah, we're going to be seeing uh, XCD oh. getting kicked off with Gunner Blade even. I'm not sure if that was needed, but. You know, Link thought it was, so it happened. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's no rules against unnecessary displays of force. So. Oh, MEFC, surely they, they turn around. They've still got the Aegis. They know RP and Epicenter on cooldown. Hookshot's now off cooldown, but yeah. Here comes the turnaround, so they're just gonna wait up on the hill. Fake back oh. and they blink it, get anti-mage, stun him, stun him again. Here comes a score, but no RP as we said. There goes the anti-mage already going down, no buyback from him just yet. It is gonna be Air running himself away, doing what he can before he does. Burrow Strike still comes though from the Rubik, and that is gonna be Magnus going down. Fade Bolt, XCD, Burrow Strikes into safety up into the high ground, but getting chased down. No tier 3 tower makes that actually Ling is thinking about maybe waiting and getting himself another Laguna Blade out of there, as in the backside there was a um, clockwork still, but Spen makes sure that wasn't there anymore. And they are indeed gonna be taking the racks. And who knows, maybe they can take more than that. And I think with that one fight in the jungle, that could have gone a lot better for MUFC, could have gone a lot better for Rising Stars. I mean, Rising Stars were the ones to initiate. They thought they, you know, caught out FC by surprise. In the end, too many supports around for MUFC to, to really take that, but I don't know, if they were more patient, they might have a good team fight going, a good FP going, but no can do. Dyer's top tower yeah, I, I just, I don't know about the decision to chase out of the base there at all. I mean, I, I feel like they just weren't sizing up their position properly. Things were still on cooldown, MUFC weren't actually that low, they still had, you know, Couple of heals here and there. Actually, am I gonna be proved wrong? Is there no urn? Is there no mech? There's not. Okay, there's neither. So, yeah, it must have just been bottle sips for, uh, for FZ. But bubble sips. Yeah. Oh, bottle huh? sips. Bottle sips. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I was thinking, what is he saying? <laughs> bubble <laughs> sips. <laughs> In English. How do I do it? Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I just don't think Rising Star is getting a very good read. On, on that one, so they lose their axe. It's now it's now kind of an uphill battle. Uh, Anti Mage can still perhaps win this, but he picks himself up a Vlad's. No. So if you, I mean, he was going to be less susceptible to the Orchid once he picked up his Manta style, but I don't know about this Vlad's. No, you would Shiver. expect a Vlad's if you think you're going to be having enough time to make it worth it and to just help you farm even more. But right now, I'm not too sure. They, yeah, I, mean, I don't it, know if it, MUFC yeah. is going to give them the time. FC finds himself air, but air blinks himself away. TP out also from Mofi, realizing they shouldn't be here. Hey, Strun, Sonic Wave, Burrow Strike, trying to help out. The Sprout hits up on air, though, and air is going to try to TP out. Won't be able to do that. Goes down. Can they find more is the question? XED going to be sandstorming himself away, rather. And then Burrow strikes himself into safety to TP out. Sprout is there. Stun is going to fly. I'm going to follow it. Whoosh. <laughs> Still hits? Ah, you can't touch that one. Nice. Can't this? Yeah, you you can't movement this joint. Yep. You, you can invis this joint. I was someone corrected me on this on on one of on an ability the, the other day. So I've been hesitant about my disjoint mechanics ever since. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check that out. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, XCD finds himself on other people again. This time he can't TP out in time before the stun hits, and he goes down in two hits. Super gonna be bursted down as well. Mofi going down, and Entimate, the last remaining hero on the side of Rising Stars, is gonna be choosing to go to his fountain, I would think, because that's the only place that he is safe. But he's actually standing pretty far forward. But this is this is out of control right now. They can't do anything. This fan is too big. He crits too hard. Hello, air by air. Laguna Blade helping out. And Antimage jumps himself away again, Blink saving his life. 
Not for the first time, and another set of racks going down. Yeah. TFG's been playing so nicely with the the, the silence initiation with the, the TPs as well. I mean, really got that fight going. Oh, poor Antimage, she's gone. Yeah, that's the that's the silence one more time. We've got the we've got the GG call. So. Yeah. We're we gonna go gonna to game, game three. Yeah, game three is gonna be the deciding game for this third place decider. MUFC are rising stars. Can MUFC keep their honor high and prove they were indeed worthy for the TI3 invite, or are gonna or our rising stars gonna prove that they are indeed one of the top contestants for that spot in the East qualifiers, uh, the end, well, end spot, I should say, to get themselves a ticket to TI3. Who knows? They've now used Entomage twice. One, one, lost one. Curious to see what they're gonna be doing next, as uh, we'll jump ourselves over to that game right now. Uh, stick around. And uh, he is Basekip. You can follow him on twitter.com slash Basekip. And I'm Shiver. You can follow me on Shiver.com. And also twitter.com slash Shiver Gaming. That's actually what I wanted to say because I don't have a website called Shiver.com. I have a website called Shiver Gaming.com. Wow, this outro is just messed up. Let's jump ourselves out. <laughs>